So this is Mad Eye. Um, he is my little kitty, and I'm gonna tell you his story because I have shown him in a lot of videos, and he's just my absolute baby. And I thought it would be good to show you guys, kind of tell you his story and tell you kind of what's happened to him and how he came to be. So I was at work one day, and I'm a receptionist at a veterinary hospital. So if you didn't know that, that's what I am. And um, we were at work one day and we were sitting up, I've, I, I have his hairs in my mouth, so. And we were at a receptionist meeting. It was around like 6.45ish and we were still there. And we see these kids come walking up to the front door. And when I say kids, I mean like teenagers. They were probably like 13 to 17. And uh, there was like three or four of them. And they came in, they were pounding on the door. And so I go and I open the door for them because I didn't know what they needed. And um, it was time to leave. Like I was literally packing up my stuff and leaving. So thank goodness I was, I was there when they dropped off at the door. And they were so nice. They were like the nicest teenagers ever. And teenagers can be little shit asses, but they weren't. They were really super nice. And they came up to the door and they had a five gallon bucket with them. And they said, we found this little kitty in the ditch on the side of the road and we don't know what to do with him. And I was like, okay, come on in. So I grabbed the bucket from them and I said, just wait up here. I'll take him into the back. We'll see what we can do. And we take him into the back and the tech and one of the doctors and one of the assistants was still there. And I was like, they just brought this kitty in. What do we do? They take a look in the bucket and there you, you just see grass. The bottom of the bucket was just filled with grass and hay and leaves and sticks. There was just this little skinny, disgusting looking kitty on top of the grass. And he was just kind of curled up into a little ball. He was a kitten, so it was really hard. You know, he was probably maybe only five months old. And he was just dying inside of this bucket that these little kids had found. They basically looked him over and they were like, he just needs to be euthanized. He's too... He's too far gone. He He's terrible. I mean, he's going to cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to fix if anyone wants to. And nobody wanted to take on the financial responsibility. And I, I completely understand that. So they were going to euthanize him. So I reached my hand in the bucket to take him out to euthanize him. And he started licking me and purring and nuzzling his little face up to my arm and I just started bawling. <laughs> I felt so bad for this little kitty and uh, we already had three cats so the thought of having a fourth cat is just like out of the question. But I just could not, I just, it felt wrong to euthanize him. I felt like it just didn't feel right to me and so called my husband and I said, Zach, <laughs> I didn't say, I was bawling into his ear. Zach, we found this little kitty and he was just brought him to the vet and he's dying and I just don't know what to do. He is, you know, at this point we didn't know much about him, but I just said, can I fix him? And he was like, God, I guess so. I guess you can fix him. So the assistants cleaned him up and looked him over and he had a bunch of grass all over his face, like sticks and mud and grass. He was disgusting, absolutely disgusting. And when they uncovered the sticks and mud and grass off of his face, they realized that his right eye was popped out of his head. Kitty, kitty, kitty. So yeah, he, didn't look good at all. He, that right eye was popped completely out of his head. Um, it looks kind of like a green olive, so enjoy green olives for the rest of your life, guys. <laughs> um, but he, he was just in really bad condition. He weighed about one pound. Um, and at that point, he should probably weigh about seven pounds. Um, so yeah, it was really bad. And what had happened is he had a terrible upper respiratory infection. Uh, if you don't know, they're, they're pretty easy to treat with antibiotics and eye ointment, but um, it's like a variation of the herpes virus for cats, and it just causes like a huge amount of inflammation. I'm not a vet, so I don't know that much about it, but I know that I treated it, so I know how horrible it was. Anyway, his just apparently got to the point where he 
was dying. I mean, he couldn't breathe, he couldn't smell food, he couldn't smell water, he couldn't do anything. So basically he was just laying in a ditch all by himself, a little tiny kitten dying. And the saddest part of the whole story was that I know he was somebody's kitty, or at least he had grown up in a household where he was somebody's kitty. <laughs> Can you see this precious little face? Um, because he knew how to use a litter box. He was super friendly, he loved people, and it just breaks my heart to know that somebody just dumped him and just let him fend for himself. He was in a cage at my work for a month, I think. Um, I was having to go in every single day, I think like six to ten times a day to force feed him a food called AD. Uh, it's like a super high calorie food that they can just gain weight on and basically they just said as much as you can get him to eat make him eat so i was force feeding him with a syringe in his mouth and force feeding him water and then a day came where he could smell food again i put food in his uh, plus he was on antibiotics as well and they wouldn't remove his eye until he had finished his course of antibiotics and gotten rid of any sort of serious infection because he could not breathe at all so putting him under anesthesia would have been super irresponsible because <laughs> he probably hadn't eaten and oh, we were thinking like a few weeks at least not a month because he was skin and bones you could literally feel every bone in his spine his face was skinny he was just so sick and then there was a day where he could smell again and then he could eat on his own so I mushed up some of that canned AD food and I put it in uh, a little dish for him and as you'll see coming up here he this was his first taste of food that he could actually taste and smell and I swear he never stopped eating since that day. So here is that clip for you. Yeah, I brought him home. I brought him home and um, I kept him that way for about another two weeks at home. I kept him in a little bathroom with his own litter box and his own bed and a bunch of towels and comfiness because he had the herpes virus, which is very um, contagious to other kitties. So I kept him in there for about uh, two weeks and kept him going on his antibiotics and everything was good. His stools firmed up. He got really super playful. We were finally able to get him in for surgery and that was amazing because uh, we'd been waiting to get that eye out for nearly two months so we got him in for surgery uh, amazing doctor at my work 
did the surgery for me for free. They helped me out with a lot of free services for him because he's just such a special little case. So we got him surgery and we got his eye removed. We also got him neutered at the same time so that was a big recovery for him. He was in the bathroom for about another two weeks after his surgery and then we finally started slowly letting him out because it looked as though the herpes virus had completely calmed down and he got to interact with our other kitties and they were pissed. They hate him. They still hate him. They think that he's the worst thing to ever walk the face of this planet. So, yeah. <laughs> so he was finally able to be let out in the house with us and I'll show you a video of him walking around our house for the first time and he's got a big cone on. He's my little cone head. Good girl. You guys are nice. What are you doing, little mad eye? And silly belly, what are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Are you walking around this house like it's yours? It's gonna be yours, huh? The surgery went really super well. His, he healed amazingly. Um, everything was perfect, and uh, he was wearing that cone for about a month, I would say, maybe a month and a half, two months. It was insane. He was wearing that cone forever, and oh my gosh, getting it off was the best day ever because he would like scoop his food up in it and he would get poop everywhere and litter because he would, you know, cats dig in their litter and then he would scoop it up in his cone and then jump on the bed to cuddle and there would get litter all over the bed. It was just disgusting. So the day we got the cone off was like the best day ever. And um, after that, everything's been perfect. He's gained weight. He's almost weighs about 10 pounds now. So he's put on so much weight and he's so healthy and he does have asthma now. That was diagnosed about, in, I think, November of last year and uh, that's been a battle in and of itself. Um, the doctor thinks it's probably a lot caused by, um, this is start of life and he's got a lot of inflammation in his lungs so he's on medication and I have an inhaler for him and uh, he does have asthma attacks here and there but we have it pretty well under control. So yeah, he is a wonderful little buddy. I love him so much. It is sickening. He is literally always around me. Uh, I am always, if I'm walking through the house, he's my little shadow right there behind me. And I think it's because he knows that, you know, I, I saved his life. You know, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn or anything, but it was, it was a big, it was a lot <laughs> getting him healthy again. And we didn't think he was going to make it. And he just pulled through and he is the best kitty ever now. I mean, I could not ask for a better kitty than him. He's so good. Although... They all hate him, so there's kind of a fight in the house every day. Come here, mother. Why don't you come cuddle with me? Come here. Yeah. And um, he's just always he's just always been such a good little boy. And uh, I'm just rambling now, but I just wanted to share his story with you. So it you know just because something seems like it's not going to be able to be fixed, and just like because something seems like it's going to be hard, or it's going to cost you a lot of money. He's cost me a hell of a lot of money. I mean, more money than I have. But what I get out of all of this is the best feeling in the whole world. I cannot explain to you. He is like my best little buddy, aren't you, baby? Yeah. So that's just his story. Um, he's perfect. He's the best little friend ever. Yeah, of course, he only got one eye and he's probably only got about 30% vision in the other one, but don't let that fool you. He has no trouble getting around. Of course, he's a sleepy little buddy right now, so he's, you know, <laughs> he's not going to be able to show you how well he runs around, but he is so good. He is wonderful. There he is. There he is. He's so cute. Isn't he brushed? Look, mad pondy. Oh, he can get it. Oh, is he going to see? And you can see his little green eye in there. He's got his little pretty green eye. Yeah, monster. So he's a happy ending. Yeah, he he may have a shortened lifespan because of his asthma and because of all the health issues he's had so far. But it's a hell of a lot longer than the life he would have had if he just would have been put down that day, or if he would have just you know, 
died in that ditch, which the thought of my little bestie being in that ditch all by himself, cold and alone and starving, breaks my heart. It absolutely breaks my heart. So here he is. He's a perfect little guy. And uh, if you ever find yourself in a similar situation, just remember that it can have a really good outcome and you could have a really good little buddy there with you at the end. So I hope you guys like this video and uh, I promise we'll get back to more cosmetic related videos later. But I just had to show you my little best friend because he's just the most precious little buddy. And uh, say bye, my pony. Bye, my pony. Bye. Say bye to all the people. Kill them both?